Established in the summer of 2010, Cavalry Brewing took charge of a commercial space in Connecticut and began their journey in exploring British style ales. Let's go inside and see what they're making. The Brewery Show is brought to you by the Ladies of Craft Beer, a community and online resource dedicated to the advocacy of women and diverse beer, home brewing, food and beer, and the Women in Beer interview series. Ladies and men, visit ladiesocb.com and follow us on Twitter at ladiesocb. Mike McCreary from Cavalry Brewing. I'm the owner and brewer. Back in 2008, I was working for a company that decided to downsize and shut down my division. I found myself unemployed. And um, I'm not very good at that, so I flew to England to learn how to brew beer. Worked at a couple of breweries while I was there. Came back, uh, did a business plan, and here we are. It started to hear the company it was actually more of just a, a piece of luck. Heard that Mike wanted to hire that. And uh, I home brewed, and the card kind of got passed to me, and that's how I got started. Yeah. I've traveled a lot through Europe and over in England. I had sales forces working for me over there, and I really enjoyed the English ales. I, I love the beer. I think it's a smoother, it's a nice balance between the barley and the uh, hops, and um, that's the kind of beer I enjoy. The name Backon comes from uh, Mike served uh, with the second ACR on the initial invasion of Iraq. Back in 2003, in January, I was activated and sent to Iraq, and I went north. I was attached to the 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment, so I called it the Cavalry Brewing Company. sent my water analysis over to a friend in England and had them review it and make recommendations. And really what I'm trying to do is mirror the Midlands of England and their water so that I can get the same tastes by using the, the Mutton's Pale Malt or the Malt, Mutton's Maris Otter and um, get the same flavors in the beers. All the barley, all the hops comes from England. So the flavors are gonna be there. Once I get into the bright tank, I like to do a very slow carbonation. So the carbonating stone will bring it up to five PSI several times over the period of 24 hours, just to try and get it to the right carbonation. The bottom line is a lot of fun, not at all. Once it initiates, it's going to move from point A to point B. If something gets in the way, something's gonna give. Sometimes we had glass going one way and beer going another. Sometimes we bend probes. But um, lately we've been doing very well. One machine is running completely independent from the other, so if one machine goes down, the other one needs to go down as we're fixing it. The learning curve was pretty steep once we started, and um, we had new equipment. We quickly learned that you know pressure is everything, whether it's pressure from the CO2 tank or the pressure from the uh, compressor or the pressure that we maintain in the bright tank itself, pushing the beer out. The first four beers are named after four friends of mine that we were, I was in Iraq with. There were three majors and one first lieutenant. So Hatch Plug Ale is named after a first lieutenant who we traded for six M16s to another unit just prior to leaving. There's a story on the bottle outlining that in, in each case. Dog Soldier was a team dog soldier, a good friend of mine was running that team. Uh, Big Wally was our commander, big guy, kind of loud. And uh, Nomad Stout was a good friend of mine who is uh, running Team Nomad. The recipes in one form or another have been around for a couple of centuries. They're a good drinking beer. Can't really complain about that. The Dog Soldier Golden Ale is a classic English session beer, a little bit lighter in color, but it's got flavor. It's going to be lower alcohol, about 4%. The Hatch Plug Ale is a classic amber English ale. Once again, 28 IBUs, it's 4.5% alcohol, and you get much more, there you get an even better balance between the barley and the hops. Big Wally Porter is 40 IBUs, about 4.8% alcohol. That's modeled after a, uh, a brewery that I worked with over there for a por their porter. I made some changes, added a little bit of chocolate and things of that nature. And um, even though it's 40 IBUs, you really don't get the feel that it's a high hop content. The Nomad Stout, is a excellent dry Irish stout. This is the only one that's not my recipe. I got this from a gentleman by the name of Steve Potts over there in Sunderland, England. And he gave it to me because I'm no competition to him. It's a great dry Irish stout. 50 IBUs, 4.5% alcohol, and it's very smooth.
I self-distribute, so it, it, it's all on me. Just by getting out there and having a presence. You know, I've done a lot of tastings. I do tastings in liquor stores locally and things of that nature. So getting out there, you know, it's great. Everybody loves to hear that it's a local beer. Let's us uh, attach ourselves to the, the people who are buying our beer. They can see us. They can, if they have a problem, they can directly go to us. And they'll give it a try. Even if they say they love, you know, hoppy beers or some other type of beer, they're actually willing to give it a try if it's a local beer. It's a, a testament to the power of the local brew in every area. Some of the things I was looking for were high ceilings, relatively new building, <laughs> having a dog that's very noisy. Uh, <laughs> uh, this place is, um, while it's off the beaten path a little bit, it's ideal because of its condition. I'm two miles from the highway and it's in a town that actually supports industry. So they do what they say. From the time I walked into the town hall to the time I went before the town hall meeting to get approved was 10 days. We're still kind of in the learning slash growth phase. We don't really have any trends or any solid feedback yet. <laughs> this is MASH. I uh, encountered this breed over in England. They have them in several of the breweries over there. They're the mascots of the brewery. Obviously the goal is to, you know, you know, increase the number of customers, increase the customer base as much as possible. Get it up over, you know, 80. Right now we're at 70, you know, clients or vendors that we, we're selling to. It's a veteran-owned and run operation. I'd like to keep it that way. It's not to say I wouldn't hire somebody who's not a veteran, but they have my priority. Oh, we are going to have slow growth. We're going to hire somebody, you know, sometime in the next year. I like what I'm doing. And I'm actually getting a very favorable response from the community. If you find yourself in Oxford, Connecticut, not Oxford, England, and you want some real British style ales, pick up some cavalry beer. Thanks for watching The Brewery Show. Until next time. It's my label inspector. <laughs> okay, yeah, I like you.